How about now? Can you hear us now? Okay. Can you hear us now? Can you hear us now? I think we just fixed it. Somebody tech type something in. There Let it us know. is. Okay. All right. You so okay. it turns out if you if you click the off button on the uh, Black Magic A10 Mini Pro, the magic box that makes this whole thing happen, uh, the sound doesn't come out. <laughs> I'm just going to blame the cleaning ladies. Okay, we can blame it on the cleaning ladies. That's it. Blame it on blame it on the Irish. <laughs> so. Let's start over again, shall we? Hi, I'm Mike Myers. And I'm Scott Jernigan. And welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Mike Myers AMA live stream. The goal of this Ask Mike Anything live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue our studies on IT certifications, concentrating primarily on CompTIA certs. Like IT Fundamentals, A+, Network+, Plus, Security+, Plus, and we can go well beyond there if we need to. So ask us anything, keep religion and politics out of it. That's for later in, <coughs> on Discord, which I'll tell you about after a while. So there you go. That's Ask it. us questions. Yeah. Oh, turn your chat from top chat to live chat. From live chat to ch top chat. No, from top chat to live chat. From top chat to live chat, like I right. said. Right, exactly, like Jeez, you said. Jeez, dude. Jeez. I can't take you anywhere anymore. I tell you, this guy. So today, just like Monday. We'll always have Paris. This is the chipper zone, and this is the not so <coughs> chipper zone. I'll be chipper. <laughs> I'll never forget that day. You wore blue. The Germans wore gray. I wore pink. Casablanca, man, the greatest I wore movie pink. ever written. What? <coughs> the sky <coughs> was blue. No, it was raining. No, that's another story, which would be outside the scope of this particular <laughs> AMA, so we're going to avoid that. Anyway, guys, so we start here at 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time, and we will run till 3 o'clock or until the questions run out. So it's really up to you guys. Uh, we do have giveaways today. We'll be giving away 90-day access to the practice questions of your choice. And uh, we'll also be giving away a free CompTIA voucher. This is an international voucher. Works anywhere in the world, or at least anywhere where CompTIA does this stuff. Guam. It, it works in Guam. Excellent. That's just fun to say Guam. It is fun to say Guam. It's like Togo. Togo. That's a, How about Trinidad and Tobago? Oh, Sierra Leone. Oh, my. We're going to go with the two-word. Uh-huh. Yeah, Papal States. I'm going with San Marino again. Ah, oh, God bless it. <laughs> Forgot about that one. <laughs> Bermuda. Duh. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. So anyway, here's how this works. You type questions into the chat window, and we will answer them. So uh, that's basically how it works. So uh, let's, let's see. Uh, Who's here? So we had a couple of questions really early. Kylie uh, Powder. Yeah, came in like an hour before the show started and posted a bunch of questions. And I don't know if she's on right now, but we can- Kylie certainly... Powder, are you still on? Type something in the chat if you're still here. Let's we'll give this person a moment. Well, we will give that person a moment. So we have- The usual suspects. The usual suspects, Tullowit, good to see you always. Alan Duggan. But Kylie Powder is still here, so... Oh, well, okay. So let's, let us deal with Kylie's very early questions, starting all the way back at 102. Goodness sakes, this young person was here for an hour. Yes. I meant to say I'm taking my exam next week. I finished the course online. My instructor was not very clear. I'm taking A-plus next. Just got Mike's book last week. Well done. Excellent. Uh, and I can't wait to be my first time watching this. Excellent. Could so you, you, got have... the, you got the mime show to start with. Absolutely. <laughs> So could you have a different public and private IP address at the same time then? Not an IPv4. Uh, if you had two NICs, I guess. I guess if you had two separate network cards with IPv4. If you had private address that was already being used as a public address, well, that can't happen, Kylie. You, there, there wouldn't be mixed together. Uh, and went to get a public IP address from DHCP. Okay. So, Kylie, uh, let's try to keep things as simple as possible. Let's consider a small home network that has a NATed router, which is 99.9% .9 of all home networks. Okay. So, on that router, you've got two connections. One connection is from your ISP, and it's often an RJ45, but it could be a fiber or it could be a F connector from uh, DOSIS, cable modems, and that's one of the connections. We tend right. to call that side the WAN connection. 
Yes, that is the double quotation marks right there, Scott. Right, that was nice. Scare quotes, even. Yeah, you didn't have to right way. Uh, uh, well, so I just have, I have one question before you go on. What color is the rotter? It's blue, of course. Okay, all right, just, just wanted blue to clear that up. Blue and black with little orange highlights. Excellent. So anyway, so on this router, you've got, on the WAN side, traditionally what you're going to have is a DHCP-derived public IP address. That's traditionally what you'll see, although there can be some exceptions to that. So when you say, can I have a public and a private IP address at the same time, I would say no, but my router can, because the router's gonna have a public IP address on the WAN side facing the ISP, and then on the other side of that router, and keep in mind, folks, it doesn't have to physically be on the other physical side of the router. A lot of times these can be all right next to each other in a row. There'll be another connection that goes out to your network. And that is almost always a statically assigned private IP address like 192.168.1.1 or something like that. And then, Kylie, what's happening is that router is then passing out private IP addresses to the individual hosts. So the individual computers inside that network do not have public IP addresses. They only have private IP addresses. And uh, so... Hopefully that helps. Uh, Kylie, if that's not good enough, just keep asking. We'll get it to you. Okay. So the, the, we, there was a part of your question that we didn't necessarily miss it. It just faded out of the YouTube thing. Uh, there's a certain time limit for questions. But apparently there was a question, Kylie, that you asked about the difference between a MAC address and an IP address. If that's nod, if yes. I'm just kidding. We'll scroll up. Let's see. Well, there's nothing there at the beginning. So what... What is the difference from Mac? I'm so guessing. I think I'll go with what you're saying. So Kylie, okay. we're assuming you're going to ask, what's the difference between an IP address and a Mac address? Uh, okay, so a Mac address is traditionally a 48-bit address, which is burnt into the network card at the factory. And the, these 48-bit these addresses are assigned to different manufacturers who people who make network cards. And this is also true for like uh, wireless network cards as well. So this, this is a built-in 48-bit address. And this 48-bit address is very important. It is the primary way that different devices talk to each other. The problem with MAC addresses is because they're burned in at the factory, people buy different things and put them all together. There's a point where with the internet, we need to organize our network into larger groupings. Instead of just calling individual LANs, we have to create WANs. And that's where the IP address comes into play. So if a MAC address is a physical address that's burned in at the factory, an IP address is a what we call a logical address because that's something you type in or you allow to be, have configured on your particular system. So every network card in existence has a MAC address. And when they're talking to each other, Oh man, this is a big long story. And it's unique, by the way. Yeah, it's unique. And then, uh, so, uh, when your individual computer is talking to another computer, everybody has IP addresses. But the first thing that your computer is going to do is it's gonna send out a command called ARP, or Address Resolution Protocol. With the ARP command, it goes, hi, I'm looking for the MAC address first, what other, other computer you're trying to get to, and would you tell me what it is? And that, that computer will respond with its MAC address. And that's whatever gets sent out. You're going to have an Ethernet frame and an IP packet inside the Ethernet frame. And that's the very, very important thing. People forget about MAC addresses. And we tend to think just in terms of IP packets, which is great. But IP, the only time IP packets exist by themselves is inside a host or inside a router. IP packets in the wild are always going to be built into an Ethernet frame. If they're on Ethernet, if you're on a cable modem, it's going to be built in a DOSIS frame. If you're going to be in a wireless, it's going to be in an 802.11 frame. So IP addresses absolutely must have physical addresses to get from one point to the next. IP addresses or logical addresses allow us to organize a small network into a much larger network, separating it by routers and le allowing us to have more complicated networks. Oh, I could go on with that, I, I, that I, for an hour. I know. That's, just for an hour that, on that, that one. That pretty much cleared it up, though. Well, I'll tell you what, though. Let's, uh, what was this person's name again? Kylie. Kylie. So, Kylie, you might want to learn about our 
dis Discord channel. Ah, yes. Uh, we have a wonderful Discord channel. Well, uh, we Total right. Seminars do not have a total uh, do not have a Discord channel. However, there is a the unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel hosted by our friend Jose Braden and moderated by several people you'll see right here, like uh, the brave and witty Tullowit, um, and Dave Rush, senior instructor for Total Seminars and who is moderating in the back channel right now. Uh, he's got the little wrench next to his name. He will post links to the Discord channel. Click it. Join us after the AMA. Come say hi, bring your camera, bring a microphone. We can have two-way conversations a lot easier that way. There you go. And also, Kylie, I see that uh, uh, Dave Rush came up with a link from last year where we talked about this exact topic. And I think you might find that very, very helpful, Kylie. And also, please come to the Discord channel. And uh, did someone put a link? Dave Rush, could you please put a link to the Discord channel up if you haven't already? And uh, I think you'll find it to be a really great resource. It's 24-7, but people tend to hang out there live uh, after AMA. So Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, it's uh, you can drop by. But it doesn't really matter. You can go either way. Also, keep in mind, with the Discord channels, especially if you're coming immediately after an AMA, turn on your camera and light up a microphone and headset so we can actually talk through things as well. Yeah, Dave posted the link at 2.13, so that should be right there in the live feed Great. right now. So let's go back. But those are good questions, Kylie. They're Absolutely. Just, they, they're going to take a little more lifting. So we have a whole bunch of people here during our uh, beginning mime show. Beginning mime show? Mime show, yeah. The, the, you know, when we were trying to do it with no sound, just interpretive dance. Oh, mime. Dance. <laughs> Look, it's a balloon. <laughs> but what color is it? Blue oh. and black with orange highlights. So A.V. Nutt, Matthew Patrick is here, Alex Norton, hey, good to see you all. Al Yukar, Rohit Singh, 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 Sing. sorry. Hello, everybody, hello. Uh, Tullowood, of course, is here. It's Dr. Awesome. Quinn. Dr. Quinn, hey. Um, I thought TV was broken. This is, there, there was still no sound at that moment. Oh, oh, all right, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody cleaned and pressed a button. Ah, yes. Blaming it on the cleaning person. Scott Anderson is here. Steady as shark. Hello, hello. Dave Rush, of course, is here. Awesome. Gabrielle Patino. Uh, at, oh, uh, there's the, the three little dots uh, called the kebab or vertical ellipses or whatever. Click that and turn on the timestamp. So we'll, when we read a question, um, we're always a little behind the latest feed, and we'll say what timestamp we are so you can see whether we've skipped your question or just haven't gotten to it yet. So at 2.05, Gabriel Patino says, in your point, what would be a good structure on a resume besides the personal info, studies, and experience? So Gabriel, we did, uh, last year we did a wonderful video on how to write a resume and put that all together. Um, and, yeah, and, and Dave posted a, Dave Rush in the background posted a link to the uh, episode that, that where Mike had special guest Elaine Batzer um, talking about great resume building. Click on that link, check out that AMA. Yeah, you we have had other questions. And we had people bring in uh, resumes, they shipped them and we critiqued them. So yeah, I think you'll find that to be a great place. To absolutely. Okay, Kylie, checking in. Yes, okay, I missed the first question, but we got it eventually. And Patricia Grace is here. Hello. All right, so at 2.10, Abu Bakr says, Does, do SSDs come in three and a half inch format? Because I've never come across one of these. Three and a half SSD, that's interesting. Well, sure I, they have. I've never seen one either. I've seen plenty of SATA-connected SSDs that were three and a half. Three and a half, not two and a half. No, the two and a half is far more common now, but we had three and a half. I, 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 okay. Scott, Scott's got that look. Here we go. Watch. <laughs> 3.5 quotation mark SSD. 
No, 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 no. There you go. There's the one terabyte, three and a half. Is that All it? right. Yeah. Mike is right. I am wrong. So, yes, of course we do. Yeah, it's not a lot. Two and a half is far more common. And, of course, now M.2 is even far more common. Right. <gasps> Look at that. <laughs> this is where we have... We're having sticker shock looking at the prices on some of these uh, three and a half inch SSDs. Because apparently they're... Uh... Well, it's Lenovo then, you know, so... <laughs> Lenovo, huh? if you have to ask. <laughs> All right, what else we got going here, man? Um, not a lot of questions today for some reason. Everybody's quiet today? Everybody's quiet. You know that if the questions go away, so do we. Just saying. So if you have some questions, ask them. I am scrolling here. Ah, here we go. Rohit at 214 says, passed my A plus last week. Yay, congratulations. Thank you so much for your course. It helped a lot. This was my first IT certification. And I'm so happy. Congratulations, That's Rohit. awesome. That's awesome. And here, I'll fill in for Mike. Now go get a job. <laughs> That's me. Uh, Avocado checked in at 214. Hello. Hang on, right there. Ah, yeah, yeah. 215. Alucard, if I ping my loopback address and it fails because the TCP IP protocol... Whoa, 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 whoa. If I ping my loopback address and it fails, don't tell me why. Because the TCP IP protocol on my computer isn't working? I, I would argue that the TCP IP protocol on your computer is working fine. It's just that you've configured it wrong. Uh, but let's just let's just... This is one of these where I wish I was standing next to AUL card so I could see how that error is manifesting in their life. Are they actually seeing an error that says failure because of TCP IP protocol, right? Right. Or is it uh, ALU card just saying that's the problem? But don't scroll past it, please. I'd like to read it. Oh, sorry. Uh, if I ping my loopback address and it fails because the TCP IP protocol isn't working, would that mean my NIC is faulty? Probably not. Um, I would be tempted to go into Device Manager, for starters, make sure that the NIC is visible, doesn't have a yellow exclamation point on it. Right. But secondarily, for someone to say that TCP IP protocol on my computer isn't working, it's extremely rare to see the files that make up the uh, TCP IP protocol stack on, say, a Windows system corrupt to the point where it doesn't work. So to me, I'd be instead, you know, I'd be looking at, I, I'd, I'd look at that. I'd also go into the network card properties where you change the IP address and make sure that uh, you haven't uh, turned it off. So Dave is Rush is saying, IP stack is either corrupt or disabled. Okay, so I think I just answered that then. Yep. A, corruption. I may have seen that twice or three times in my entire life. Right. And most of the time I ended up having to reinstall Windows because I was so frustrated, right. I couldn't find anything else. Uh, but it could be disabled, extremely rare thing to do, but you can go into your network card's properties and actually turn off, is it workstation? I forget, it's been a while since I've been in there. Client? I am rusty. Rusty? Let me light up control panel. Yep. Maybe a little faster. Uh, network and sharing center, change adapter settings. Let's just pick an arbitrary one here that's probably not working real hard for a living. Uh, Try the blue one. Yeah, there we go. With the uh, black and the orange highlights? Yes, that one. So under properties, what do they call it these days? Client for Microsoft Networks. Guys, I can't put this up on a screen right now. We just don't have the technology. I can put it up on the screen, but it's like this big. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you could definitely turn that off, and that would be the equivalent of disabling it. Well. So there we go. Hope that answered your question. Sure. Avocado, I'd love for you guys to review my CV. Avocado, send me your, send it to me, man. It's no big deal. Uh, send it to me, Michael M at totalsem.com, and I'll be glad to give you my opinion. Sounds uh, great. And I will definitely check it out for you. So let me leave that up for a second more so Avocado can... Uh... 
get that. And this gives you an opportunity to scroll a little bit. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Okay, let me so bring that back up. There 217, right. Catherine, hi gang. Passed my 1001 yesterday. No, Congratulations, congrats. that's well done, awesome, Catherine. Catherine. Good luck on 1002. Have you signed up for it yet? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. One down, one to go, as Dave Rush put it. Uh, what is a, a, Yeah, AV Nut. So Dave Rush, not only senior instructor and really fine, funny guy, indexed the entire past year and a half of, of AMAs down to the topics. So you can search right there in YouTube. You can find all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a ridiculous amount of information. And Dave indexed it all for you. So there we go. So I don't know what this is. Yeah, Matthew Patrick, you're going to have to ask that question better, man. I'm not sure what you're asking so, for. Yeah, Matthew, you asked a question at 219, which was formatted not as a question. So I'm not quite sure where you wanted to go with that. Matthew will bring it back up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just ask again and we'll figure it out. That's interesting. Uh, I was told the loopback address tests TCP IP. No, the loopback tests. Well, you got to be careful with loopback, okay? A true loopback, which is going to require a loopback device, verifies will we'll send out packets and see if they come back into the device. So I guess it is testing TCP IP because you have to have a functional TCP IP stack. Well, the problem ALU card is that you're, you're saying I should drop from my Cisco class then. I was told the loopback address test TCP IP. It does. I, I, I don't know, understand how that would be contrary. Uh, the problem with loopback is that if you have a true loopback, you'll, you have to have TCP IP working, of course. And when I say working, the stack has to exist. Corrupt TCP IP stacks are such a rare thing that if I were to catch a technician looking at that as a primary issue, I would question his skill set because it's that incredibly rare. Now, could it be turned off? That is a possibility. But you also have to remember there's a completely second type of loopback that's far more common. And this is the difference between a $10 or a built-in network card versus a $75 card you pay money for. And that is, for a lot of devices, the loopback, they, and you, you, you'll know you're doing this kind of loopback because you're not using a loopback device. You just run uh, a, you, you ping 127.0.0.1 and you get a response. That's because those types of cheap network cards are designed to look at that and they do an internal test and it doesn't actually check anything at all. So there we go. So Michael Reeves popped in at 221. Hello, good to see you. Trevor Sheridan, greetings from Montana. Core two, take three next week. Oh dear. So. Trevor, you've taken the core two twice before. Uh, Okay, well, fingers crossed, absolutely. Uh, Trevor, you might want to uh, consider grabbing my practice questions. Um, I, I don't know what practice questions you're using. Uh, I would, <laughs> let me say this in a real nice way. If you failed twice, I'm hoping it's because you didn't use my practice questions. Uh, and we're giving practice questions away, in fact, quite shortly, so Trevor, Get ready and see if you can get some free practice questions. Right. However, for those of us who don't want to pay for practice questions, I'm sorry, for those of us who want to pay for practice questions, keep in mind that we have some really good deals. Uh, just because you're kind enough to show up here, we're offering 50% off combination ebook practice questions. To me, in order to pass any IT certification, you need a book, you need a video, and you need practice questions. You need those three things. So this gives you two out of the three. And in order to take advantage of this deal, Dave Rush posted it at 2.19 p.m. Uh, but what you do is you go to www.totalsem.com. This is all in the post right there. Go to www.totalsem.com. Head on over to our merchant area and pick up, say, if you want A+, plus, to get an A-plus e-book and A plus practice questions. So you just load those into your cart 
And just before you check out, what's the term? for Pablo. Pablo. Just before you check out in the coupon code, type in Pablo and you get half off. Guys, we're already about the cheapest folks out there in terms of what I call the quality training materials. And at 50% off, it's just ridiculous. So that might be something you want to consider as well. Right. Absolutely. So good luck, Trevor. Study hard. Uh, avocado. I don't know. I, you don't know that one? I don't know that one either. Avocado, I apologize, but uh, I am unfamiliar with the terminology that you're using. I don't know what ITSM is. Uh, yeah, we're, <laughs> I've got, yeah. <laughs> Avocado, I'm sorry, buddy, but um, I don't know of ITSM at all. Oh, and it's, uh, it's, it's ITIL stuff. Yeah, we don't, uh, we don't, we don't dabble in ITIL yet. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's about IT management and service. So avocado ticketing yeah. and that kind of stuff. Sorry, bud. It's a outside, doesn't happen a lot outside of our wheelhouse. But Sorry. That, that one's a, yeah. So that's ITIL. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not super familiar with that. All right. So two twenty two Alu card. If I get a blue screen of death, how do I get to the last known good configuration option? Is it found in Safe Boot? Also, that if that option fails, if I log on, oh, does that option fail if I log in before I attempt it first? No, it's probably already failed, to be honest with you. Uh, if you get a blue screen of, well, no, that's not true. I was about to lie. If it's the initial blue screen of death, you immediately run uh, the repair environment and just let, let Windows fix that for you because it will pull up automatically your last known good configuration. The, I don't even know if you can do that manually anymore, can you? I haven't tried in a while. I think it's all automated. Uh, the only other choice you could do, ALU card, is um, you could, again, through the repair environment, grab a, uh, a snapshot. I've been doing too much Linux lately. What's it called in Windows? I just Restore blank. point. Restore point. Uh, within <laughs> Windows, you can, uh, in the repair environment, you can uh, just pick uh, arbitrary restore point. Keep in mind, guys, this whole thing isn't almost isn't worth it anymore, in my opinion. Unless you're setting up a restore point like once a week as an absolute minimum, mm -hmm. uh, you, all you need is one Tuesday update that you skipped and your last known good is way behind the times. A little less than good. A little less than good. Uh, but, you know, but that does bring up the important point. One of the things I always stress to people uh, is you should always have a Windows installation um, media so you can boot up to it. And th that should, that so you just have that there and you can get it. Um, okay, so yeah, looking for questions here, just for a second. Um, two twenty-two, Abu Bakr asks: In a wireless network, can I configure two normal wireless access points as an ESSID? You absolutely can, as long as those two WAPs are connected on their Ethernet side to the same switch. Uh, all you have to do is give them the same name. It's, it's, the, it's not the most beautiful way to do it, but it absolutely does work. And uh, it's fun, actually. You know, one of the things that people should do when they're playing with ESSIDs mm -hmm. is it doesn't matter what WAPs or wireless routers you're using or whatever. Go ahead and just configure them, but configure them using really long cables. So the idea here, if you can do this, it's kind of fun, is you can have these two WAPs really far apart mm -hmm. and literally go from one to the next, like run between them and watch the handoff. Hmm. That's pretty, okay. It's pretty interesting. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Michael Reeves, this, uh, we'd love to hear this at 222. First week at my new job. That's what I do. Day like three, to that's awesome. Congrats on the new job and good luck. Um, JM at 225, 226 asks, is domain kiting illegal? 
So domain kiting, for those of you who don't know, is when you register for a, a domain name, uh, there's a like a five day grace period where you don't have to pay for anything or where you can cancel it and there's no penalty. So domain kiting is the practice of basically registering and then deleting and registering and deleting the same domain name over and over so you don't have to pay for it. And yet that domain can still be yours, quote unquote. Uh, but is it illegal? I don't think it's technically illegal. It's, it's, I'm sure it's against almost any policy. DNS person's policy. Yeah, but... But I'm not sure if it's illegal. Right. JM, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about the, the legality, but it certainly... Uh, uncouth behavior, shall yeah. we say. Yeah. It's just rude. It's rude. Kylie Powder at uh, 226. Is YouTube live stream where people talk after this class on Discord? No, ma'am. Discord is a completely different application. You're going to have to get the Discord application and download it to your system. Uh, it runs on smart devices, it runs on desktops, laptops, wherever you want, but you're gonna have to download that, and then you use that link we gave you to connect uh, to it. Excellent. But they're different animals. Ulysses Ferrer, did I get, hey, Uncle Mike, hey, Ulysses, did, did you get my email? That's a good question. Ulysses, I get 400 emails, emails a day. day. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, so did I get it? Maybe. So Anthony, uh, while, while you're looking up his email, I'll answer Anthony Truong's question. Uh, Dave Rush posted the specials at like 214, something like that, or 219. Uh, so just scroll back up and you'll see the uh, specials. You just go to www.totalsim.com. Uh, put in an ebook and and a um, corresponding practice test. Then when you go to checkout, you type in the code Pablo, and you'll get fifty percent off. Yeah, and it's just for people who are watching this live stream. So yeah. there you go. So yeah, all you have to do, Anthony, is just scroll up on the uh, chat, and you'll see that you just try it again. Absolutely, Trevor. I have your book, practice questions, and videos. Oh no. All right. Good luck, Trevor. Three, third time's a charm, right? Not good enough. Trevor, I want you to send me an email. This is for Trevor Sheridan. Trevor, send me an email, michaelm at totalsem.com. And I want you to send it to me as soon as you possibly can, please. I, I always worry when I see people, you know, fail. And I, and I don't, I, and I, I wanna see, maybe I can help a little bit here, Trevor. Can't guarantee anything, but maybe I can help. <clears throat> oh, okay, 2.30 p.m. David Mohan, our uh, seven-time heavyweight champion. The Mohanator. The Mohanator, yes. Uh, so good at answering questions that he's banned from winning anything Not anymore. banned, per se. Well, okay. He's been... He's been Mohan. Elevated. He's been Mohan. He's been Mohan to a new yeah. respectful level. So anyway, at 2.30 he has a question. What is your opinion on beta slash survey questions? They're terrible. They're <laughs> fantastic. Uh, the problem with beta or survey questions is that... Uh, so David, I want to be careful what you mean by... Are you talking about the beta or survey questions that are on... CompTIA exams? I, that's what I would guess. I would go so with that. So just for those who don't know, uh, on some CompTIA exams at certain times, you can have what are called beta questions. I've never heard the term survey, but I'm, I, I think I get where you're coming from. And uh, the problem with these questions is they're invariably the first multiple choice questions you run into. And they are nothing that you've studied, which makes it even more off-putting Especially if you're already nervous yeah. taking the exam. Yeah, so all of a sudden you see these questions that are coming out of left field and you start to panic and you're like, Mike Myers training materials are terrible. And I don't know, nah, 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 and you start. And the number one reason people fail CompTIA exams is test anxiety. So I don't know why CompTIA does this. But do keep in mind, when you sit down for an exam, when you start to take some, and, and, and the multiple choice, this isn't the performance space, it's in the multiple choice, and you start getting questions that you don't recognize, particularly right at front, they're betas. They're not gonna be graded. Don't panic. 
okay? I mean, go ahead and try to answer them as best you can, but especially if they're right at the beginning of the multiple choice questions, they're betas. Ignore them. And uh, not ignore them. Answer, answer them, them the best you yeah, can. Yeah, sure. Uh, but but yeah, don't get rattled by them. Yeah, don't get rattled. And if you're, David, if you're also talking about the survey questions that come at the end of the exam, if you've never taken a CompTIA exam, it's one of the most jerkish moves CompTIA does. Oh, that's what he meant is, by survey. Yeah. Okay. At the very end of the exam, you're like, oh, did I pass? Did I pass? And you click it, and it says, you need to answer these 10 questions before you get your score. It's really rude. So yeah, the survey. There's a sur a long survey at the end. You, there is a an option at the bottom of the page where you can skip the survey altogether. But most people just answer the survey because they don't see that little skip thing. Uh, and yeah, they're annoying. That's my that's my answer. Avocado, I got your email. I'm not going to look at it today, but uh, on by next Monday I'll have an answer for you. Avocado, I may just send it directly to you. Okay, uh, sounds Avocado awesome. sent the CV. CV, absolutely. So at 231, we're not doing too badly. Uh, Frack says, hi, Mike. After applying to hundreds of IT jobs all summer long after graduating with my cybersecurity degree, I finally got an offer to work as a network administrative assistant. That's awesome. That's did how you, it works, man. Did you take the job? I'm sure he did. <laughs> well, congrats. And good luck. Uh, Frack is also finishing up uh, getting ready for the Network Plus test. So that's awesome. Good luck on that. Uh, okay, so Rohit at 2.32 asks, is there a way to connect through remote desktop connection and have both PCs see whatever is happening? Because I might not know, but in Windows, I think only one PC can have control. So you've got two versions of remote desktop. There, oh God, I forget well, the name. Well, remote assistance and remote desktop. Yeah, so remote assistant. Two, two very different things. Yeah, okay, yes, remote assistant and remote desktop. So in a remote desktop connection, yeah, you can people can control at the same time, right? Mm -mm. The, the, it's the opposite. When, opposite. Yeah, when you when you connect with, with a remote desktop connection, the the remote desktop goes blank. It goes dark. It's remote assistance where remote you assistance you see everything that's happening, and. Remote assistance, for example, when my mother calls and says, hi, I'm having trouble with my computer. Who's her tech support? <laughs> Me, of course. And I'll log in remotely to her system through remote assistance. She can see everything that I'm clicking on, and there's a big button on her screen that says, stop. So if I start poking around her personal thing, which of course I wouldn't, but if a technician starts going, hmm, wonder what's in this folder, the person who whose computer has been remotely assisted into can shut off the session. So that's remote assistance, not remote desktop. Remote desktop is basically making your the remote system working on it as if it were local. So there you go. Oh, Kylie, okay, good. You got the Discord now. Excellent. <laughs> Mark. Uh, at 233, uh, Mark asks, uh, roughly, what percentage of the NetPlus exam is ports <laughs> and what is subnetting? Because I'm worried, okay? <laughs> uh, you will get port numbers. You will get some subnetting questions. Probably about half a dozen total. Of, so, of both combined. Combined, yeah. You got to keep in mind, though, that, that like, for example, when you're running into port questions, the port questions aren't necessarily questions about the ports. They're questions about maybe the application or something like that, and they just assume you know the port number as part of that. Mm. You know, Bob's running on HTTPS. Uh, da, 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 da. You know what? Why don't we just instead, why don't we have a competition, Scott? What, what a fine idea, Mike. What would we be having a competition for? We are going to have a competition for free 90-day access. This is for my buddy Michael Reeves, who I, I, or maybe he has them already. He said he does, um, yes. Sorry, I'm getting all, I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, no, no, you but, mean for Trevor Sheridan, but yeah. Thank you. 
Yes. Uh, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to have a competition right now, and this is a competition for 90-day access to whatever practice questions you want. That we sell. Okay. There you go. And uh, in order to take advantage of this, all you have to do is I'm going to put a question up on the screen, and you then go ahead and answer the question. It's going to be a multiple choice question. Do not type in A, B, C, or D. Actually type in enough of the answer so I know where you're coming from. And then secondly, understand this is not fair, okay? So whoever answers first wins, but just because you look like you're number one on yours, that doesn't mean it's what we say. So we try hard to do it the right way, but uh, you know, do keep in mind that it can be a little bit unfair. But this is a good question that actually addresses the port numbers. Oh, and as for subnetting, you're going to get maybe one, maybe two questions, and they're ridiculously easy. All right. Should All we right. do this, Scott? We should do this. All right, here we go, guys. You ready? So remember, you're going to type the answer into the chat window. Here we go. All right. Oh, let me get this so everybody can read it. Whoa, whoa. Hello. <laughs> Sorry. It's a big one. All right. What can be done to harden a public e-commerce web server, assuming default ports are being used, choose two. All right, install a PKI certificate, enable TLS. Install an SSL certificate and enable PKI. Do not use an administrator account to run the web server and do not use ports, do not use TCP ports 80 or 443. So this is a great example, Scott, of a question where it's not really asking about port numbers at all. Oh, so you're telling them that's not the right answer? No, I'm not saying that at all. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I, it's, it's just a matter of knowing what, you know, what they want you no, to no, do. Absolutely. Is these are hardening things, okay? So I'm going to give everybody a moment here. Let's see what people come up with. Do not answer A, B, C, or D. Yeah, if you answer A, B, C, or D, we're gonna, I'll ignore it. And Ooh. choose two, right? Yeah, it's not just, it's the, you need two answers. Two answers. We'll let him go for a minute. Uh, okay, this one. Uh... We are we are letting you type. People are not typing. It's for free access. You can guess. You know that, right? <laughs> yeah, I get. Yeah, guys. Yeah, type type two. And also, do keep in mind that uh, I don't think anybody's typed the right answer yet. I'm scanning quickly. Steady a shark. You cannot type letters of the alphabet. You've got to type in enough. It's passing anyway. Okay. <laughs> Quit and grade test. Tell them it. You crack me up. I don't think anybody's got it. I don't know. Well, let me let me take a whack at it. All right. All right. Install so a PKI certificate and enable TLS. Absolutely. That would be a hardening function. Uh, install an, that's that's not true. PKI is built into these things by default. Right. You, Dan today would say, do not use it. Yeah, you certainly do not want to use an administrative account, and do not use port eighty or four forty three. You know, I would argue that that would harden stuff. But what they said is assume default ports are being used. Right. So that thing, I'm pretty sure it's A and C. So Let's install PKI, and do not use an administrative account. Let's see if anybody got that right. So. I'm Install a PKI up. certificate, enable TLS, and do not use an administrative account. This is pretty straightforward. You know, most people don't think about, they don't think about administrative accounts on web servers, but you can do that. <laughs> Patricia Grace, motherboard standouts. <laughs> Poor Catherine, can't see it. Aw. You know what? Uh, I'm nice. going to arbitrarily give it away. Well, hold on, hold on. This, this, let's go. Somebody might have answered correctly. Or not, as the case may be. So let's arbitrarily pick somebody we like. Okay. Let's pick a new face. Okay, I'll tell you what. At 244, I've got a person named Mark Wazkelis. Install a PKI certificate, which is true, enable TLS, and install it. That part isn't right, but you know what? Mark, just because you're a participant, I'm going to give it to you, man. Congratulations, Mark. Mark, in order to claim your prize, here's what you got to do. Mark, you have got to send an email to kathyy at totalsem.com. Okay? Now, Mark, I'm hoping you're writing this down as fast as you can. 
Uh, but in that email, you have to put two things. Number one, put in your YouTube name. And then number two, and so it's Mark Wasellis, whatever you have. And then number two, which practice exam you wish to have. Because Mark, we got lots of different exams. So just pick one you like. And if you're unsure, just head over to www.totalsim.com and find something you like. We, we've got lots of good stuff in there. Absolutely. Congratulations, Mark. Uh, David Mohan, is this the first time no one got a question right in a competition? Yes. I'm pretty sure, yeah, yeah. David, I think that's the first time that's ever <laughs> happened. Was that a Security Plus question? It was, yeah. It was, Sec yeah. Plus. Yeah. Good question. That was good. Hmm. I just, because he asked the question about ports. And I thought, what a great way to right. show. No, that's a great you know, Good question. It really doesn't talk about ports, but uh, yeah. So there we have it. Nicely done. So congratulations to you. All right, I'm going to go back up to 234, which is where we left off. I think there were a couple of questions. I have uh, this is a good question, actually. Uh, at 234, Joshua Echeverria. Uh, hey, guys, I have my A+, plus and was planning on moving on to Network+. Plus. But at my job, my boss has been starting to show some Linux server management. Do you think I should go to Linux Plus? Sure. I, uh, Linux Plus is quickly becoming right up there with Network Plus as one of the most important certifications you'll probably never use. And when I say never use it, you'll use it constantly. But a lot of people will go for certificates because they're like, oh, I'll get X number of certificates and I'll get a job. And that can be true for Security Plus. That can be true for A Plus. That can be true for CCNA and CISSB. But you don't see a lot of people saying Network Plus certified. You don't see a lot of people saying Linux Plus certified. However, in terms of the amount of knowledge you pick up, they're absolutely intense. And Joshua, in a situation like this, where you literally have a boss who's straight up saying he's moving towards Linux Plus, that would be a feather in your cap that would really tie in. Just be ready to technically interview for that in a way that everybody knows what's going on. Right. Yeah. So Steady as Shark at 237 uh, asks about the beta questions. They're not graded? No. Um, are they clear and obviously beta questions? No. no. Yeah. They're that's... pretty, ob in my opinion, they are, maybe because I just know the exam so well. Uh, but yeah, they are not graded and it is not obvious. Uh... Oh, Alucard. Yes, that's right. I'm... Mike got back from vacation. I didn't prompt him. He won like the day before you left on vacation. So there was a, a lag. So we need to check on that. Uh, all right, ALU, AL, ALU card, I will look into that. Um, three <laughs> weeks ago, you would have had a response by then. A so. Absolutely. The problem is, is nobody ever tells me when they get their vouchers. They only tell me when they don't get them. Uh, you well, know? you know, hmm. you're just like the bad news bears. That didn't make any sense at all. Not even slightly Not even close. slightly, okay. Human well, leg 86. Mike, why are you so awesome? It is because... Uh, I like to sing. Ah, ah, ah. There we go. That was our song of the day. <laughs> the ah song. Yeah, right? You're scrolling past all kinds of stuff. What? I'm not scrolling past anything. Dr. Quinn, are the beta questions 90 questions? No, there's only some... some look, are we talking A+, plus, Net+, plus, Security+, plus? are we talking CYSA? Are we talking, you know, right now? Are we talking two years ago? CompTIA changes this stuff constantly. Most of the time, if you take a CompTIA exam, especially if you're right before the exam changes or right after the exam changes, they tend to have beta questions in there because they're tweaking the exam. They're trying to get it just right. Uh, there's, not, there's 90 questions on the exam, but the betas might be one question. Might be three. I don't think I've ever seen more than three ever on an uh, exam. There's a lot of Beeps and honks and there are beeps whistles and between your house my makes a lot of noise. Dishwashers and home theaters and okay, IoT Google. everywhere. No, no, yeah, I've, <laughs> I've still got that shut down. I, I, uh, uh, I I've had all my uh, uh, home automation shut down for a year now. I just Google get, loves you. They miss you. I get nervous about <laughs> things like my thermostat and my garage door openers being tied in. So I do have a way to get to these things remotely. I just mm. don't use the tools 
that uh, are so easily provided because I don't trust them. Excellent. So 242, Dave Rush posted in the background a link for a magnificent training document that he created uh, that covers all the ports and protocols you need for A+, Network+, and Security+. So check out that link at 242 if you're studying. It's a good way to have all the details in one fine place. And now we have lots of questions, lots of answers. Today's guest is A, David Mohan passing. <laughs> uh, yes, and uh, most people got it completely wrong. So there you go. Um, Dejina Buberry says hello at 2.47. Hello. Hello. Uh, so. JM, can you explain how the CompTIA scholarship works? So Dave Rush um, posted a link to the CompTIA scholarship at 2.50. Can you click on that? I don't know about the scholarship. May I? I'd like to see it, please. Oh, gosh. I'm going to click, huh? Do it. Do it. Do, Do it. it. This was back in April. Applications are closing soon. CompTIA will award $2,000, five students. Yeah, it's the first I've read of it. That's the first I've read of it. It seems to already be passed. I apologize. Uh, let's go ahead and go it's back. You, God, I just... Uh, it's for you, Mike. Just say no, Mike. I'm saying no. <laughs> Good God, I'm very to turn this thing off. Right? So at 2.50, JM asks, is there a certification to help me learn how to build websites and be certified for it? I imagine there is, but... There was the old uh, CWS. Uh... Dave, did you post that link in the chat or just to me? Guys, Dave Rush uh, gave us a link. Dave, go ahead and put that link in the uh, chat so everybody else can see it. Uh, Jam, it used to be, I can't, can't believe I've forgotten. Become a Certified webmaster or CWM or? Oh, he did post it. Okay. Yeah, okay. And uh, so, Jam, we're going to let uh, Dave Rush help you out there. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Ayukard. Uh David Ocampo at 251, is it possible to have clustered IIS servers? Where sure. a server goes down and the site gets transferred over? Absolutely. Uh, not only, you can have anything clustered. It's, you, you, kind of like this. Yeah. If I, mean, I go down, he keeps talking. Windows supports clustering just fine. Uh, I'd probably be more of a Linux box. I'm not sure why you'd be all wound up about doing IIS. The only time I use IIS is for... Like the first time I teach somebody what is a web server, because they've never seen, everybody's seen a web client, a web browser. And, uh, but, uh, can you handle that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but so few people see servers. And the reason I like IIS is because it's nice and graphical. Right. It comes on every Windows system in existence. So you can install IIS. And I just use it for training. But I'm... Do people use IIS for like heavy lifting on real web browsers, web servers? Apache. No, I know Apache, of course, but I'm saying this IIS is a competitor, an alternative. Oh, Lord. I don't know. What, what is happening with your phone? I go ahead am, and deal with that. I'll deal I'm, with this. All right, go ahead and get so that. So at 251, Kylie asks a question on IT fundamentals, which happens to be one of the courses I teach. So IT fundamentals, and the question is, what's the difference essentially between DSL and cable in terms of the exam. Both are considered high-speed internet. Um, you know the different speeds, right? Cable being uh, offering a lot higher speeds on the high end than DSL, certainly. Um, the difference really is in cable requires a dedicated cable line from a cable company. And it's a coaxial cable that comes into your house into a specific box that is a cable modem. Um, DSL would have a different type of box called a DSL modem, 
um, and it uses a regular phone connection, like an ancient... RJ11 phone line. Right. Um, which is part of the reason I think it's that it's so limited. It's they... But the thing you gotta remember, now you're not gonna see this on IT Fundamentals, but most of the fiber that comes into your house, like AT&T, Fias, and stuff like that, that's DSL. Well, it uses the, a lot of the, the... It's a DSL signal. It uses the signaling, yeah. But. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's DSL over fiber. Uh, so that would be, that is the difference between DSL and cable. They're completely different technologies. Kylie's next question is interesting. Are the wires different? Yes. Yes. They're completely different yeah. cables. So for doses, uh, for cable, when you say cable, that sounds, you always should say doses. That's the protocol. That's going to be an F-type connector, just like the same thing you screw into the back of your TV. That's what, it's a threaded coaxial cable. And with DSL, it's uh, unshielded twisted pair. Completely different animals. Right. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, uh, <laughs> Mr. S, why does Comp at 253, why does CompTIA word the questions like that? It's like from a different universe. I'm not a Klingon. With a C. With a C, right, which is even better. <laughs> Hamlet sounds so much better in the original Klingon. <laughs> I can actually speak Klingon. Really? I can. You ready? I'm, I am ready, Mike. Jar talk. Does that mean thank you and have a nice day? No, it means switch to tactical. <laughs> it does! <laughs> That's literally the only uh, thing I know how to say in Klingon. Nice. I knew, I, I, thank you, Dave. I was forgetting the other big player, the biggest player right now in, in uh, web hosting is uh, Nginx. Has taken over the entire world. Yeah, I've been, I'm an Apache guy. That's all I really know. Yep. Um, oh, look, look, human leg. We use IIS for FlexNet licenses, roughly 550 plus users. Cool. Yeah, human leg. I didn't say IIS wasn't being used. I know it's out there. It's just, I think I'm just such an Apache guy. I don't really see it anyplace else. So, yeah, there we go. So, uh, Rohit Sin, Singh uh, says, you guys should make something fun like the social engineering zone. That's what our Discord channel is all about. <laughs> Seriously, Rohad, check out our Discord channel. It's a bunch of fun Rolluxum characters. So, yeah. And Tolowit. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so Tolowit keeps it serious. You know, he's, a, that's he's, right. the, yeah, he's the steadying influence, mm -hmm. you know. That's, that's right. That's sanguine, right. as yeah. it were. Oh, yes, yes. So at 254. You like it when I use those big words. I folks. do. They're like college level words, man. <laughs> 25 cent words. That's right. Uh, wow, Mr. Tiger. I didn't say nothing else. Here we go. All right, so. 254. Janabu asks, with a CCNA certificate or certification and two years of network engineer exp experience, do I need a master's degree? Not in the United States. Um, I mean, look, advanced degrees in any STEM field are always going to be things that pay for themselves. Now, if you had a master's degree in, I don't know, history. Western history or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wait, wait, what do you... Yeah. So, but it, no, in general, anytime, if you can go for a master's degree in any STEM field, that, that, engineering or anything, those tend to pay, them, pay off. Do you, do I need one though? No, you don't need one. I mean, Jen Boo Barry, if you were here in Houston, Texas, and assuming that, you know, you could give a decent interview and, you know, you could show up to work at 8.30 in the morning every day, uh, if I, I'll have a feeling you'd be somebody who could be easily hired in the Houston area. I, I wonder why do you ask me this question? Did, did someone else come to you to talk about this or something? There's huge demand out there for uh, technicians. And yeah, you have to work hard. The biggest problem people have getting jobs is they don't want to travel. They don't want to go to another town. Right. Or they'll read something in there and they'll say, oh, must be able to lift 25 pounds. And you're like, you know. Uh, but, you know, assuming you have some flexibility, I, I'd be hard-pressed to meet a person who's just unemployable. There's usually something going on that they don't share. So. Right. So more tech, and we're obviously going to run a little past 3 o'clock today, which is fine. That's fine. It's always good. Um, more tech asks at 255, uh, is a month of study enough for me to pass the A-plus exams? I don't know. Have you used my practice exams and, and getting close to 90% pass rates? then it would be enough. 
The problem we have here, more tech, is that I don't know what your study habits are. I don't know who you are as a person. I don't know what kind of time you have. I don't know if you're a kinesthetic versus a visual versus an auditory learner. Um, you know, most people for A plus need about 220 hours of study as an average. Uh, so that's the best guess I can give you. So in the introduction, if you have Mike's A plus book, um, in the introduction, like before chapter one, there is a guide that is tailored to individuals that says, here are all the different fields that are covered in A plus, rate your level of experience in each of these different fields, and at the end, you can add everything up and it'll give you a recommended <coughs> number of hours to study. So a month might be just fine for you, but if you're a complete newbie, then uh, maybe Everybody's not. different. Yeah. So, Everybody's different. Anyway, check out the introduction to the, to the A plus book and that <coughs> might help. Uh, Daniel at 257 asks, any recommended labs <coughs> on uh, hands-on lab platforms to study for Linux Plus that are web-based for on-the-go study? <clears throat> no. In fact, Daniel, this is a big area that we've been really talking about in-house, and that is uh, we don't really address Linux Plus as well as we should. And uh, I know that uh, Scott and Dave have both been kind of chomping at the bit the problem is, is we are stretched very thin, and uh, yeah. I know I want to do Linux Plus. It's about to rev to a new new version. Uh, yeah, but then so is A Plus. So there you go. Um, so two fifty seven J M asks: At your house, do you connect your embedded devices like cameras, smart thermostat, etc., to a separate network than the network you use for your computer or laptop? Is that a good a good habit to get used to. I don't know. I personally, I find most IoT devices to be more robust than your typical desktop systems. <laughs> right. Um, well, because they just don't do as much, right? Right. Um, but uh, I've done it every single way. I've had them all on the same subnet. I put them on a separate subnet once. I put them on a separate VLAN once. Uh, I've never had a physically separate uh, network. Uh, I have a separate SSID for IoT devices that are connecting wirelessly, uh, but that would be about it. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't have a strong opinion on it. A lot of people say put them on a separate VLAN. Okay. Well, the challenge you run into yeah. is you're like, oh, I'm going to be all the security. I'm going to put on a separate VLAN. Well, what if you like Google? Okay, Google or Google Assistant or whatever it is. Right. It's not going to hear it. Google only listens to the broadcast domain that it's on. So if you put a camera on a separate domain, is there some way to get around that? Probably, I've never seen it. But if any of you guys have ever messed with like Google in particular, like somebody has a, uh, a, a Google mini device, mm -hmm. if you're like on the wireless network with that thing, you can change the channels on it and do anything you want. Uh, so there could be an argument for it. I don't know, you can go either way. All right, so 258. Blue-Eyed Diablo. Blue-Eyed Diablo. Says, hey Mike, I'm currently working towards my A-plus certification and I'm taking your CompTIA course and taking lots of notes. What are some other things you recommend to get ready for the exam? You're doing fine, Blue-Eyed Diablo. Get Schedule some... the exam. That's probably the other big thing that, you know, heat and pressure makes time is that if you put your money down and schedule for the exam, why are you giggling at that? I, I'm not, I'm, I, I, I'm ready to interject. Okay. Yeah, so you, sh you should, you should, you should, you're going to interject? I'm going to interject. Get some practice exams. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to be ours. So are, Our competitors have good practice exams too. So. Kylie Powder at 259. Sorry my questions are so basic. I'm just starting out. Kylie, that's, that's the what we're here for. Absolutely. You are our customer. You feel free to ask all the dumb questions you want. You are great. Oh, look at that. Even Tolowitz said the same right? thing. Right, exactly. Of course. Good questions are good questions, and IT fundamentals is part of our wheelhouse. It's all good. <laughs> Three year pass to you in 2024. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. S, would you consider, uh, 304, would you consider a total sim app for Android or iOS? We've done that a few times, you know, like flashcard things and stuff like that, and yeah. Don't make any money at it, is really what it boils down to. Right. All so, right, Scott, I'll tell you what, we, it looks like things are slowing down a little bit. They are slowing down. Why don't we go ahead and give away a voucher? 
really? You mean like a $200 to $400 value of voucher that somebody can take anywhere in the entire world? A CompTIA exam? Why, yes, Scott. That's exactly what I mean. Wow. Let's do it. All right. So, guys, uh, we are about to have a competition for a free CompTIA voucher. I'm worried about ALU card. He said it was three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Yeah. I just don't like, like that. We'll figure it before, out. Yeah. CompTIA, uh, yeah, it's all good. We're, we'll get him fixed up. In the meantime, Absolutely. let's go ahead and, and uh, do another voucher today, right now. Uh, this will be another multiple choice question. This is going to be an easier question, okay? And uh, what I need you guys to do is remember uh, it's, it's multiple choice. Do not type in A, B, C, or D. And the first person who gives the right answers wins. And I think this is actually possibly a little bit too easy of one. But eh, I've already got it queued up. Let's do this. You guys ready? Here we go. Which of the following encryption algorithms are block ciphers? Choose two. Dun, 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 dun. We've got dead air. See, if, if we're just sitting here not talking. I'm reading the question. What, why, why are you reading the question? Well, because I don't like this question. Oh, well, choose two, by the way, not one. I'm going to stick with it because I said we would, but I don't like this question at all. Which of the following encryption algorithms are block ciphers? Block. Ah, uh, All right, we've got some answers? We do. We have, we have right. a whole bunch of answers. All right, guys, so I'm going to give this a shot. AES is obviously a block, block cipher. RC4 is obviously a stream cipher. So now I've got IPsec or RSA. Neither of these are really ciphers. Oh, but no, wait, they are encryption algorithms, though. Uh, th this should say, which of the following encryption algorithms use block ciphers? I would have liked that better. Okay. Uh, IPsec probably could go either way. RS, you know, the funny part is, yeah, RSA is definitely not going to work because it's got to be IPsec and AES. I just didn't, uh, B is, see, I told you I didn't like this question. Then they're going to say RSA. Uh, let's look at the explanation on this. So this is interesting because RSA isn't, it's not a block cipher. It, it will use block ciphers at certain points, but so would IPsec. You know what I mean? This is a, I, I'm not a big fan of this question. Hey, Dave, Dave Rush, question three, four, seven, seven, three. We're going to keep that one in as a questionable, but I, there's some argument for it. I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to stick with this question, and I'll accept C and D as the right answer. Scott, do we have a winner? I believe so. But this is, an, while Scott's digging this up, this is something I want to make mention to you guys, and that is if you think you're going to walk into a CompTIA exam and every one of your questions are going to be crisp and clear and fair and well-written and no typos, you got another thing coming because it's it. This is true all over the world of IT. I think I like that question, Scott. I, I'm I'm uh, yeah. We'll re we'll have a gang review on it, but I think it's a good question. I'm going to stick with it. And, and what were the so answers? who we got? What were the answers? It AES and RSA. AES and RSA. <laughs> so who said AES and RSA first? Well, oh no, our our, our very the newest, new gal, our newest newbie, Kylie Powder. Congratulations. Look at that. Kylie Powder, well done. That's awesome. Okay, so, oh boy, wait a minute. We have new rules here. Do we? I didn't set this up. So Dave Rush is now handling all the vouchers. Ah, stuff. okay. So here's the key, right? There's a whole bunch. Kylie, pay attention. This is important. You got to pay attention. Here's how you get your voucher. Right. So this is not us giving you the voucher. This is you giving us information that we send to CompTIA, then CompTIA is going to give you the voucher. Okay, got it? So to do this, you need to email, send an email to Dave Rush, the senior instructor uh, at Total Seminars, and our moderator here on the back channel. He's posted the, con the connection, the contact rules at 111. Yeah, scroll, we're at 308. Scroll all the way up to the top. You're scrolling down. 
Scroll he posted up. them at 3.11. I don't know why he posted it, said 1.11. He posted them at 3.11 Central Time. Oh, okay, thank you the, for reading his mind. Stamp. So Kylie, you need to send an email to Dave. It's davr at totalsim.com. And what you need to do is type your YouTube name, type your real name, uh, you need an email address. Now be careful, you're gonna say, well, I'm sending him an email, just use my return address. Not good enough. I've got, you have, you have your email address in the body of the email, even if it's the same email address. And here's the last piece of it. You need to say where in the world you're going to take the CompTIA exam. So I don't care if you live in Omaha, Nebraska, you in that email have to say, I will be taking the exam in the USA or wherever it is. You've got to do all these things, Kylie, because they're a little bit serious about all this stuff. And uh, look at that. I like it when new people win stuff. That's awesome. And Kylie's in Canada. So there you go. There you go. All right. And, and uh, next thing you know, the, you know she'll, she'll, be, she'll be the next person who gets Mohanated. <laughs> right? Because that she's, was a pretty now fast she's, Now she's like, oh, I won something. I'm going to go with it again. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you all for participating in the AMA today. Oh, this Friday, Dave Rush, Senior Instructor for Total Seminars, has his AMA. It's called the Dave Rush AMA, so drama. It's on Fridays. Dave will do a Ask Me Anything type format, but he also will do a presentation on something involving a Raspberry Pi. And a, what is a Raspberry Pi, you might ask? It is a system on a chip, a tiny, inexpensive, epic computer uh, done by the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, that runs Linux. So this is a good chance for you to practice your Linux skills for A+, Network+, Security+, and learn some cool stuff about a very cool computer. Last week, Dave did the first half, or the first, oh, no, he's not gonna do, oh, oh, ah, okay, so, I'm not sure what Dave's gonna do this Friday, but it's gonna be a, a shorter show followed by a costume contest on Discord. That's right. And the, the winner of the costume contest gets a brand new Raspberry Pi kit. So really? this is pretty epic. So show up, it's two o'clock central time, uh, it's the same YouTube Total Seminars channel uh, for Dave Rush on Friday. Um, yeah. And what he's going to do are, and Dave posted exactly what he's going to do at 314, uh, performance monitoring commands and utilities for Linux. So this is awesome. And then the following week, we'll, we'll carry on with the RetroPie gaming system, which is cool stuff. Sorry, I'm literally, David Mohan and ALU card and stuff, I'm responding as fast as I can. Excellent. So real time answering your emails while live on YouTube, because that's what we do. Anyway, thank you all for participating in the AMA today, and we look forward to seeing you on Dave's show on Friday and at the costume contest on Discord and possibly on Discord right now. Cool. All right, guys, y'all have a good one, and I will be back on Monday. And until then, I'll be dealing with lots of emails and getting vouchers sent out. Blah, 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 blah. Right? But we'll get there. All right, Excellent. guys, folks, thank you so much. Be good. We'll see you again soon. All right. Bye. Bye. How do we get out of here? I don't know. In the stream. Ah! <laughs> uh, and now, that moment of dead air.